to really enjoy the breath meditation, you have to learn how to savor your breath. And there are different ways you can do that. Think about savoring a sensual pleasure, a fine food, beautiful music. Part of it is putting yourself in a receptive mood. Part of it is how you talk to yourself. And part of it is opening yourself up physically, especially if it's listening to music, opening yourself up to the effect that it can have on you. Well, the same principles apply with the breath. First, remind yourself, this is the force of life that you're watching. It only stands to reason that if it feels good inside, it's going to be good for you. It will give you energy, soothe the nerves, nourish the muscles that have been overworked. You can do a lot of good. Then try to make yourself receptive. Try to notice which parts of the body are most sensitive to how an in-breath feels or how an out-breath feels, but particularly the in-breath. If you're not sure, hold the breath for a bit until you feel you've got to breathe. Then as the breath comes in, you'll notice certain parts of the body really feel relieved. Okay, Those are the parts you should focus on. Those are your sensitive parts. For some people, it's down in the chest, in the area around the heart, or it could be behind your eyes, in the middle of the head, or in the throat. So explore for a while. Pay special attention to the in-breath, because that's the energizing breath. The in-breath is something you do. The out-breath is something you should learn how not to squeeze out. You do the in-breathing, the body will allow things back out again on its own, at its own pace. And then when you feel the need to breathe in again, okay, but then breathe in. Sometimes it's good to try to regulate the rhythm. They've done research that a rhythm in which you take five or six seconds for the in-breath, five or six seconds for the out-breath. And try to keep it regular like that for a while. It can be extremely calming. When you have trouble maintaining a full five-second breath, ask yourself which parts of the body are tensing up that are preventing the breath from coming in that long. And try to relax them. And also try to get out of your head and into your body. Remind yourself that consciousness is there in all the parts of the body. And John Swan made the comment one time. He said you could take an iron stake and stick it in any part of the body and you know that there's pain. It's not like the awareness up in the middle of the head has to go running down to the leg to let you know there's pain if the spike is in the leg. Your awareness in the leg lets you know right away. So have that sense that you inhabit the whole body. And you're right there with the different parts of the body that are sensitive to the breath. Especially if it's around the area around the eyes or behind the eyes. This is an area that when we think a lot in the course of the day, the blood gets pushed around quite a bit. So if you allow it to just stay still around that area, the blood can flow in. There's a sense of fullness, comfortable fullness. It doesn't feel tight or stuffed. And then as it's full, the breath comes in, nourishes that part of the body. It feels good. Feels gratifying. So you learn how to talk to yourself about the breath, and you learn how to tune in to the parts of the body that are actually sensitive to the breath. 
and open yourself up to them. That's why the meditation becomes something that's not just in your head, it's actually down there in your body, the whole body, and it provides you with a place you can settle in. And then just from that in, it's just a matter of modulating things so it feels just right. Sometimes the rhythm feels good for a while and then not so good. Well, you can change. It's entirely up to you. This is one of the areas of meditation where your preferences actually play a large role. What kind of breathing do you like? Do you like long breathing, short breathing, fast, slow, heavy, light, deep, shallow? There are lots of variations. And you think of the breath energy doing different things in the body, coming up from the soles of the feet up through the legs, giving support to the spine, or going down from the top of the head. The Zen Master Ha Queen had an image. He said, think of a big ball of butter on top of your head. And as you breathe in, think of the butter melting and going down, down, down the body. So play with the breath, play with your perceptions around the breath. Play with all the different kinds of fabrication that go into making up your sense of the present right here, right now. And it's in playing with them that you get to know them. It's like learning how to play a guitar. You take the guitar into your room, you close the door, and you pluck at it. Then you discover a few things that sound nice. And you play around, and you find some things that don't sound so nice, and you drop those, you go back to the things that sound nice. But then you start experimenting, exploring. Bringing in some ingenuity. But also learning how to be sensitive. With a guitar, what sounds good to you? With a breath, what feels good to you as you breathe in? You want to get sensitive to this, because you're going to be getting sensitive to what the Buddha calls name and form. Name covers all the different activities of the mind. Form, of course, is the form of the body. And you want to learn to be sensitive to these things on those terms. Because that's what the discernment is. Discernment is not imposing somebody else's ideas on your mind, saying they say you have to see things as inconstant, stressful, not self. Okay, where's the inconstancy? And then you can come to the conclusion, oh yeah, it's true what they say. Coming to that conclusion is not what the Buddha wants. He uses those terms, but he uses other terms as well for getting a sense of what's going on and how you're building things out of the raw materials of name and form. And how it's just not good enough. You find things that are good for a while, and this is you're encouraged to do this. As John Lee says, you try to take what's inconstant and you try to make it constant. You take what's stressful and you try to make it pleasurable. You take what's not self and you try to get it under your control as much as possible. See how far you can go in that direction. It's only when you push up against the three perceptions like this that you find the point where they push back. And you, where do you find that? In your own sensitivity. And the choice to hold on and the choice to let go is also made in your own sensitivity. No one's forcing you. But as you get more sensitive, you begin to see there are certain things that you've done or are doing that you used to like, but you don't like them anymore. 
It's not satisfying anymore. You found something better. This is what meditation gives you something to rely on, something to fall back on. You're not simply asked to say, well, learn to get detached from everything and then let go. The Buddha gives you things just to hold on to so you can let go with a sense of safety. And also a sense of being rewarded by letting go. As he says, letting go is for your long-term welfare and happiness. So we're not here simply to see things as they are. One, because we're here to see things as they work, how cause and effect work. And two, we're seeing these things so that we can be more discerning in what really is a satisfying form of happiness, a satisfying form of pleasure. After all, nirvana is the ultimate pleasure, the ultimate happiness, the ultimate sukha, bliss, happiness, well-being. And you get to appreciate it first by learning how to appreciate what feels good right here, right now, in the body. So try to develop your sensitivity here. Learn how to savor what's pleasurable here. Because it will reorient you, give you new ideas about what happiness is, what well-being is, and what's needed to find it. And it also opens you up to the potentials you have right here. Think about all the skills the Buddha found in his meditation, leading ultimately to the ultimate skill, which is the ending of the affluence. Why well, are you going to know what an effluent is unless you get really sensitive right here? So try to get sensitive right here in the heart, right here in the body. Explore your sensitivity. Savor what you find is good. That's how you develop your palate. That's how your discernment gets strong. Strong enough to overcome a lot of the preconceived notions that you bring to the breath, bring to the body, bring to your own mind, bring to life. It's only when you find something you really like right here that you can change the way you rank pleasures in your life. Because this is a blameless happiness and has a lot more potential than sensual pleasures. Learn how to savor the potential of well-being simply here in name and form, as you got it right here, right now. <laughs>